Hi there. Our read aloud story for week 18 is One Dog Canoe. The author who wrote the story is Mary Casanova. The illustrator who drew the pictures is Art Hoyt. This story is a fiction story. That means that the story is a made up story. The setting of the story is on a waterway, a river. And even though this is a fictional story, it's made up, the characters, the animals that are in the story, are real animals that you could see in real life. Let's begin our story. When I read a story, I read the words with feelings. I think about what is happening and how the characters are feeling. I read questions and exclamations differently than sentences that are just statements. I set off one morning in my little red canoe. My dog wagged his tail. Can I come too? You bet, I said, a trip for two. Just me and you. Let's chat about what we've read so far. Where are the girl and the dog? Yes, they are by the water. What is a canoe? Yes, it's a kind of boat. How can you tell what a canoe is by looking at the picture and thinking of the words we read? The word says that the canoe is red and the boat in the picture is red. So from that we can figure out that a canoe is a type of boat. What do you see inside of the canoe? Yes, the girl has a picnic basket in there. Let's continue reading. I dipped my paddle into ribbons of blue. Beaver stopped chewing. Can I come too? There's not much room. It's a one dog canoe. But with a slap and a swim, Beaver scrambled in. I swished past ferns where dragonflies flew. Loon stretched her wings. Can I come too? I doubt you'll fit. It's a one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a woo-hoo flap, Loon landed on my lap. Silently we glided under silver webs of dew. Wolf peered from the pines. Can I come too? Maybe next time. It's a one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But like an arrow on the wind, Wolf bounded in. Still I paddled on in my little red canoe. Bear slid down a tree. Can I come too? We're pretty darn full. It's a one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But... With a grunt, thump, kawump, Bear dropped on his rump. I J-stroked and C-stroked. What else could I do? Moose lifted his head. Can I come too? You'll do us all in. It's a one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a toss of his rack, Moose climbed in the back. We teetered and tottered. I glared at my crew. Frog hopped to a rock. Can I come too? Frog, can't you see? It's a one moose, one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a leap, plop, swoosh, a bang, flop. We sputtered, splashed, swam, dripped, dried on the sand. Sorry, Beaver said, we should have listened to you. Guess you were right, it is a one-dog canoe. I started to grin. 
It's okay, we had a good swim. Then together we bailed till my vessel was dry, and with a push and a swoosh glide, we waved goodbye. I set off that evening as the northern lights grew, just me and my pail in a one dog canoe. Let's go back and talk about our story a bit, my friends. What animal does the girl see here? Yes, they see a beaver. Can a beaver really talk to people? No. Do you think the story is a fantasy or is it realistic? Yes, it's a fantasy because the animals talk to the girl and ask to take a ride in her canoe. Can you really see a beaver in real life? Yes, that part is real, but the beaver talking is a fantasy. This page said, I swished past ferns where dragonflies flew. Loon stretched her wings. Can I come too? What type of animal is a loon? It's a type of bird. If I were just thinking about the words on the page, what gives me a clue to help me know that a loon is a bird? Yes, the author tells us that the loon stretched her wings. We can also use the picture to help us. This page says, I J-stroked and C-stroked. What else could I do? Moose lifted his head. Can I come too? When the girl says that she J-stroked and C-stroked, she's talking about how she paddles the canoe so it won't tip over after the bear had jumped in on the previous page. What do you think will happen now that the moose wants to jump in and join the canoe ride? The illustration on this page tells us that the girl is very nervous, very frightened about what will happen when the moose jumps in. And then on the next page, the moose did climb in. And look at how squished all of the animals are. So far in this story, Animals are coming one at a time and ask if they can ride in the canoe. Each time the girl says no, but the animals climb aboard anyway. The animals are getting bigger and bigger. If more animals want to come along, I cannot see how they can all fit in the canoe. This page tells us that the girl glared at her crew. Do you know what it means to glare? Show me a glare. Does it mean that she is happy or unhappy? She is not happy. She did not want them all to get in. On this page, the girl is telling the frog, no, you may not get in. Frog, can't you see? It's a one moose, one bear, one wolf, one loon, one beaver, one dog canoe. But with a leap, the frog jumps in anyway. And that's when they plop, swish a bang, flop into the water. At the end of the story, where are the girl and her dog now? They are getting back in their canoe. What do the words say about what happened after the canoe tipped over? What did the animals do to help? Yes, they helped bail out the canoe and they say they're sorry. Why do you think all of those animals didn't listen to the girl in the first place? That's a good question. How is the end of this book like the beginning? At the end of the book, it's just the girl and her dog in the canoe, just as the story began. 
How are the beginning of the story and the end of the story different? Yes, at the beginning of the story, it starts in the morning. And at the end, it ends later in the day. I hope you enjoyed this story, my friends.